Well, tonight, Democrats hoping for keeping control of the House of Representatives are dimming. The CBS News characterization at this hour is that the House leans Republican. CBS News estimates the GOP will win a minimum of 214 seats, while Democrats are estimated to win at least 210. The magic number is 218. CBS's Robert Costa takes a look. Lawmakers returned to a transformed and uncertain Washington Monday with Senate Democrats ready to celebrate. These elections have shown that the MAGA Republican way is not where the American people want to be. Maintaining their grip on the majority, Democrats framed it as a rejection of election deniers and Trump disciples. I will always fight for you no matter what. Because Saturday night's victory in Nevada by incumbent Catherine Cortez Masto gives Democrats at least 50 seats in the chamber with a chance to increase their majority if incumbent Raphael Warnock can beat Republican Herschel Walker in the December 6 Georgia runoff. But I think as we're celebrating the fact that we now have a 50-50 majority, we all know that this job is not done yet. We still have to win in Georgia. Both parties remain on edge about who will control the House. Some Republicans are debating who should lead them and pressuring the frontrunner for House leader Kevin McCarthy, who had hoped a red wave would sweep him to power. As we can't have a peacetime speaker, we need a wartime speaker. All this as former President Donald Trump plots a comeback. If President Trump is going to announce on Tuesday that he's running for president, and it's going to be a very professional, very buttoned-up announcement. It's a move that is being publicly discouraged by some in the party. It's basically the third election in a row that Donald Trump has cost us the race, and it's like, you know, three strikes, you're out. With his new book out tomorrow, former Vice President Mike Pence is taking aim at Trump for telling the Capitol attackers he lacked the courage to block the 2020 results from being certified. It angered me. But I turned to my daughter who was standing nearby and I said, it doesn't take courage to break the law. It takes courage to uphold the law. I mean, the president's words were reckless. It was clear he decided to be part of the problem. Tonight, there are indeed growing debates over who should lead Republicans in the House and in the Senate. Even Senator Mitch McConnell is under pressure from some colleagues. It's a blame game after the party's disappointing midterm performance, which many now attribute to the former president just before that big announcement tomorrow. Nora. Yeah, just before Thanksgiving. All right, Robert Costa, thank you.